are wondering, yes, I have recorded Mickey versus Yoda, Shadow versus Ryuko, and of course, the last one, Lex Luthor versus Doctor Doom, all sequentially. That's why I'm wearing the same outfit. I decided to record these all at the same time so that I wouldn't be behind. I know that the next one, which is Heihachi versus Geese, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing Heihachi's name wrong. I have never played the Tekken series, so bear with me. Uh, this is gonna be on the 19th of April, so today, the time of recording, is April 6th. I am gonna have this fight, Lex versus Doctor Doom, ready for the 7th on Wednesday, aka the day that this comes out. So that's gonna give me, for both Monday and Friday of the following week, ready the Mickey versus Yoda fight, along with the Shadow versus Ryuko fights. So. Yeah, this is this is the third video. So if you see a little bit of inconsistencies with me saying like, oh, I'm gonna follow these, it's because I recorded Yoda versus Mickey, Ryuko versus Shadow, and then Lex Luthor versus Doctor Doom sequentially. This is the third one. I hope I have it released for tomorrow, aka Wednesday, the seventh of April. And yeah, I have a bit of an explanation as to why it took me a little bit of time to release both the Yoda vs. Mickey and the Ryuko vs. Shadow videos on the Yoda vs. Mickey video, which is gonna come out on the 12th on Monday, so you'll have to wait for the explanation. And so, let's continue on with this fight with Lex Luthor vs. Doctor Doom. Roll it! I have a very bad, <laughs> bad history with Doctor Doom. There was so many people who were hating on me on the Darth Vader vs. Doctor Doom video that I made, all, made a long time ago because I talked over the explanation and that's why I... It was both ways, both my fault and the fault of my audience because on my end, I didn't pay attention to the information and, and just voted for da Darth Vader. I voted for him to win. And the other end, my audience were not thinking like, hey, maybe she got a little bit overexcited with Dr. Doom and talked over the information, uh, Dr. Doom, with Darth Vader. And she talked over the information. Let's give her some slack. No, I didn't get any slack. People started to bother me and send me basically death threats about calling me how, bitch of, how big of a cunt I was, how big of a bitch I was. And I'm like, you know there's other shit you could be worried about, right? Aside from someone on the internet talking either badly or over the information of your very character. There's other things you can do. And so yeah, that video no longer has any comments on it because I decided, hey, you know what? Block that shit. Save yourself the hassle. So, okay. Let's continue on with the fight, shall we? <laughs> and we're gonna skip on all of the promotional stuff, as usual. So. I am so sorry if you hear some knocking. That's my upstairs neighbor. So I'm gonna be. I'm gonna try my best to remove that from the audio. Lex Luthor, CEO of Lex Corp and nemesis to Superman, and Doctor Doom, King of Latveria and Doom of the Fantastic Four. What was the name of this <laughs> country? Unmatched in their own world. But what happens when the geniuses of these spiteful nerds collide? He's whiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who, who would win a uh, death, death battle. battle. Heck yeah. <laughs> the poses. Come on, Lex In Luthor. The city of Metropolis, soaring above all other structures, one can find atop the tallest building, an L. Who's the dickbag that decided to literally hang that L over everyone's head? Just the one and only Lex Luthor. Born and raised in Smallville, Kansas, Lex's early life was complicated. Yeah, I remember his life. Was a scientist doing dubious experiments on Martian Manhunter. When the lid was cracked on this evil science operation, as his head... Baby, no! Lex and his old man got a convenient memory wipe, reducing Lionel to an alcoholic and setting Lex down a path to get away from his dead... Oh, shit, I forgot about that. there with you, bud. But because this is comics, that's just Lex's story in one continuity. In another, he's a mad scientist. In another, he's a self-made Hey, girl, girl Superman. Well, woman Superman. Superboy Superwoman. Superboy made him fall. I wonder this guy's so cynical. <laughs> Regardless of which Lex we're talking about. Oh, that scene. Come on. In his eyes, if that scene. To exist, humanity will become weak and reliant on him and ultimately perish. Supposedly. 
Ever since Soups flew into town, he's been Lex's undoing. But also his driving force in creating technology. Chief among them being his war suit. This bad boy comes equipped with loads of goodies. A force field, electroblasts, missiles, a chest laser, and wrist blades for all your Batman shanking needs. Oh my god, he's an assassin. He has many different energy sources for his suits, but his newest and greatest is the Mother Box. A nigh inexhaustible piece of... Oh, don't tell me that freaking Justice League is canon, the Zack Snyder thing. And teleport via quantum I'm not gonna watch that movie, by the way. Nah. Not interested. It's old Lex go toe to toe with Superman himself. Well, it is questionable if his suit is directly comparable to Superman going all out, especially with his reliance on Kryptonite. But Lex has used it to fight with other DC powerhouses, like this orange Bugman Larflees, who's basically a one-man lantern corps. You know that band of green boot stompers who can cross the universe in under an hour. Knowing DC has a universe at least a hundred trillion light years across. This would require a speed over five quintillion. Oh, dip. Oh, no, no, no. Or how about the time Green Lantern Kyle Rayner held back the big freaking bang? Much of Lex's tech is relegated to the war suit, but he does have on hand gadgets too, such as a heat ray, robot replicas called Lexbots, and a special barrier Lex box. that turns anything it touches two dimensional. It turns you 2D, huh? That sounds like a weeb's wet dream. Oh my god, freaking Frocky and Bullwinkle examples. We can replicate and place the form of a three dimensional object into a lower, flattened form that. Yeah, make it stop! Make it stop! Well, I knew the old squirrel diet was a good idea. Unlike Lex's 80s tech, he's not all two dimensional. Sure, he's had his squabbles with Superman, but after Soup died, not when he punched the great guy when he blew up this punk, Denny, he gained a newfound respect for the Man of Steel and took up his mantle. Maybe he isn't the bald psycho everyone thinks he is. Eh, doubtful. Lex's actions, both good and bad, tend to stem from... That's pretty doubtful, dude. He really, really wants to be Superman himself. Mm, he jelly. It would explain... You can't be him. Project, ...an experiment meant to turn normies into superhumans. Unfortunately, Lex's genes were not compatible. Ha -ha. He still went through the procedure, but even after some voluntary organ harvesting, he only had six months. Voluntary. Wow. Lex really does want to be Superman, even if it kills him. But if Lex can't be Superman, he might as well make himself the one person that Super Citizen has to answer to. Which is the why president of the freaking United States. Run for president. <laughs> Can you imagine? Uh, freaking evil course. And hates aliens. So unrealistic. Lex was already a nihilist with few real attachments. And became all the worse when he learned he could neither be nor control Superman. Uh -huh. Take, for example, the time he made a cure for his sister's terminal illness. Ooh. Well, that doesn't seem so bad. And then reinfected her with that same illness seconds later, just to prove he could. Jesus! Uh. Never mind, he's evil. He Why is evil. Work for this guy? Lex's outlook on life actually gained a big following. After traveling millions of years into the future, because comics, Lex saw a world where his goals became reality. Where people quit aspiring to the impossible standards of superheroes, instead embracing who they were deep down, selfish and greedy animals. So he literally inspired a philosophy around being the opposite of Superman. Apparently. Isn't it ironic, though, that even those who chose to follow Lex's ideals called this philosophy doom? Oh god, and those characters kind of look- well, that character looks kind of like the Joker, but I know it's not him. Or maybe, I don't know. I, I, I never read the comics. To his credit, they have seen him through some pretty heavy stuff. Like outsmarting Brainiac, getting tortured by Joker, and getting shot out of a helicopter by a gorilla. <laughs> Don't worry, somehow he got better. Is that gorilla from The Flash? Stripped of everything, standing before an almighty god, Lex Luthor will continue to defend his idea. Disappointing! The Harbinger of Doom is truly beyond comprehension. Or so he says. Who is it, Superman? Lex Luthor, the greatest criminal mind of our time. Come on, Doctor Doom! Doctor Doom! It appears to be a humble nation located in the center of Europe, but within its borders may be the greatest threat the world has ever known. Comrade? Really? Doctor Doom! But Doom did not start out as a king. Born as a Romani, Victor von Doom had. Thank you for saying Romani and not the G word. His mother's soul was taken by the demon Mephisto, and his father died on the run from an evil. Freaking really? He did what any mad scientist would do, and began making inventions. 
like his own robot replicas and Marvel's favorite retcon device, the Doombots. Hmm, that sounds familiar. Yep. The technical wonders he made while also scamming people were so great, the Empire State University offered him a scholarship. And so became wow. a good old college try by Doom. There, Doom built a device to communicate with his mother in the underworld. But because of a miscalculation <laughs> that may or may not be what? used to the thing, oh, no! he blew up in his face. Literally. It's okay, though. After the explosion gave him a nasty scar, Doom ventured to Tibet, where some monks did him a solid and helped him build a suit of armor. Made from oh. a mystery of science and mysticism, uh. Doom's titanium armor goes beyond the wonders of ordinary technology Yikes. and into the absurd. It's the Swiss Army Knife of Power Armors, complete with electrical blasts, a device that scrambles brain neurons, and a laser staff that doubles as a technovirus. At full power, the suit can break through an adamantine coffin and allegedly contains pieces of the cross that Jesus Christ himself was crucified on. Freaking really? <laughs> that is so stupid. With this suit, Doom easily conquered Latveria and overthrew the Don't come at me. So much trouble years back. Aha, take that asshole. Seeing how prosperous his rule was, Doom thought <laughs> he could make Latveria better by conquering it. Why not make the whole world better by conquering it? No. I mean, a panther god did say he should. Too bad he was always stopped by the Fantastic Four. And their leader, Reed Richards, also known as Mr. Fantastic. To put it lightly, Doom freaking hates him. One yep. time when Doom was being pulled into hell, rather than try to escape eternal torment, all he wanted to do was burn and scar Reed's face. Jesus. Doom, Reed Richards is a man of unquenchable vanity and unmitigated arrogance, consumed by his own ego at the cost of everyone around him. Yeah, I think Doom might be projecting a bit. <laughs> Though he has failed many times to conquer the world, Doom certainly has the arsenal to do so. Yep. Anti matter guns, bombs that transmit things. No! Aurora! Commander that turns tiny particles into boulders and time shifts. Hey, the freaking Iron Man. Send you several seconds into the past. But his most interesting gadget is the cosmic power siphon. While not particularly fashionable, at least before he implemented it into a suit, the siphon has absorbed and stolen the powers of numerous cosmic entities. Oh no. You might be asking, if Doom has all these gadgets, why doesn't he use them more often? Thank well, you. In his own words, Doom's reasons are his own. Do not question them. But Doom is more than just a scientist. He's also a magician. In fact, a contender for Sorcerer Supreme. Oh no. Such, he can employ all manner of magic spells. No, not Sorcerer Supreme. Energy blasts, etc. And if he ever wants to freaky Friday a bow, he can use a mind swap technique he took from the ovoids to switch bodies. Like this. That is not good. Oh, how do you walk with these scrawny legs? This one is <laughs> And the doctor's drunk! Why are there <laughs> six of you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a funny joke. Change is back. <laughs> As no surprise, a multi he deflected Mjolnir? On some of Marvel's toughest heroes. Oh god. He's faster than Reed Richards, who reacted to interstellar beams fired That is not Thor's good. And has even deflected Thor's hammer. That is the not good. same hammer that flew Thor across the universe in seconds. Knowing Marvel's universe has a diameter of at least one trillion light years, Mjolnir must have been moving over two quintillion times the speed of light. And that's not even getting into Doom's battles with the green universe clappers, the Hulk. Or the no holds barred punch he took from Sentry with only seven percent of a suit's power left. Oh God! With so much tech and magic, it's a wonder. All of this math. It. Well, for all his achievements, Doom does have one insurmountable weakness: squirrel. Ah, squirrel girl! Nobody's a match for those little bastards but me. But hey, as long as he stays on Buck Dude's good side, he should be all right. He also has a bad habit of just losing godlike power at the worst of times. Like when his control over the power cosmic was taken by a plot convenient cosmic energy stealing super airplane. Still, <laughs> persevered and became the god emperor of everything. Oh no. Until Mr. Fantastic stole his powers away. Uh -huh. Oh boy. Convenient. Doom already hated Reed. What did he think of him after that? Surprisingly, Doom's time as a god caused an epiphany of sorts. He looked back on his actions. His ego finally shattered. And in his reflection, was left with a desire. One cup of tea later. So he took up the role of Iron Man of all people. What? Not being so world conquery and became a good guy. Just for a little bit. Don't worry. He was back to being a maniacal would-be conqueror soon enough. Uh, of course. Uh, comic book status quo. It seems a literal multiverse scale intervention couldn't keep Doom from being Doom. Doom. Your plan 
to destroy them has failed, Master. Failed. Doctor Doom does not fail. Oh god, that's a little bit intense. <laughs> that is a bit intense. More on Doctor Doom than on Lex Luthor. Oh my god. This is gonna be a little bit of a tough nut to crack, if I can use the expression, thanks to the squirrels. Mmm. Oof. I know that I lost my vote when I said that, oh, Vader's gonna defeat Doom, and Doom actually won. Ugh. Uh. This is so tough. One. I don't know who to vote. Doctor Doom or Lex Luthor? <laughs> this is a very difficult thing. I want to say that Doctor Doom's gonna win. If you see any cuts, that's that's because my neighbor is knocking or tapping on something. So, yeah, that's gonna take a while. If you hear it, again, I try my best to remove it from the audio, but hey, neighbor says no. And so I'm gonna stick with, with my guts again, literally. Guts love, guts. I'm gonna go with Dr. Doom this time compared to last time when I voted for Vader. And so with that said, let's go on with the fight. Who will win amongst these two magnificently intelligent evil men who like to wear green? <laughs> let's go. Alrighty then, come on. Is it gonna be CG? It has to be CG. Death battle time! Come on. Oh, so it's gonna be. It's gonna be pixels? Oh god. Come on, you you begun with the pew pews. Now get yourself onto your suit. Kaboom. Get onto your suit. There we go. A mechanical replica. It's called the Lex Bot, you knuckle dragging buffoon. His design is rather ingenious. Not as ingenious as mine, of course. But enough talk. Let us end these charades. With pleasure. How about you? Okay, so Dr. Doom's coming in strong. What is this confounded contraption? Just dimensional morphographic technology. I haven't perfected it, but it's more than enough to exterminate an imbecile like you. If you would have stayed quiet, you would have gone the kaboom. Uh, of course, the time travel. You activated my trap card. Oh, nice. I am a god, you foul creature! Ooh, come on, we got another whirlwind all up in here. Dude. 
Nope. Haha. Don't you see it? That mask is my true face. <laughs> he pulled a mind mind switchy switch. <laughs> I did not expect that. Nice. Okay, bye Luther. Bye. <laughs> Doctor Doom wins again. Oh god. That was brutal. That was brutal. Handing someone the L, but never pinning him to it. Having a slight speed advantage and a stronger suit by most measures, Lex was able to hold his own with Doom for a time. And sure, Lex could counter some of Doom's arsenal, but he couldn't defend against being transmuted to chrome, being blasted with antimatter, or getting his nerves scrambled from the inside. What's more, Lex's mind has been swapped before, once with Superman, funnily enough. Meaning if things oh, I didn't know that. There was nothing to stop Doom from pulling a Captain Ginyu on Lex. No, Spidey, run! Lex's mother box was certainly a powerful device, but he never quite mastered all of his potential. Not to mention, Doom's ace in the hole, the cosmic power siphon, has drained and stolen similar energy sources time and time again. Oh, dip. The silver server, and even the friggin' Beyonder. Yeah, I know, this mulleted Beyonder doesn't look like much, but he apparently has millions of times the power of the entire Marvel multiverse. And the siphon- Frickin' multiverse. All of it. There's no way the mother box could stand up to a device like that. Thus, it was only a question of if Doom could bide his time before turning the tables on Lex. Yep. And given all the beatdowns he's survived from Marvel heavy hitters like Hulk and Sentry, I'd say Doom had that time. Lex's tech was an impressive challenge that had the stats to contend with Doom. But against Doom's bewildering gadgets, magical trickery, and power-stealing siphon, the advantage was in the Doctor's court. The nice. king of Latveria claimed his victory. Hopefully Lex isn't a sore loser. The winner. The freaking puns. Uh, okay, that was brutal compared to the other two. Okay, so let's see the actual preview of Heihachi versus Geese. Not All Might versus Might Guy. <laughs> oh god. Heihachi versus Geese. And if the fight's cool and all, I mean, it's gonna release on April 18th privately and then on the 19th publicly if I'm correct but mm, brutal also some abilities that I didn't know about Dr. Doom they were updated I actually appreciate that a lot I knew most of it thanks to the previous death battle and also Lex Luthor if I'm not mistaken but that could be wrong on my end and so with that said thank you all so much for watching we will see what happens with the Heihachi versus Geese death battle if you want to support the channel please check out my Ko-fi link or my Patreon if you want to do this like a monthly thing but if you are limited to your to your budget because COVID you can do a one-time uh, donation with my Ko-fi please I would really appreciate it and so with that said we will see each other next time on the next death battle and please take care of yourselves disinfect Wear a damn mask and also get the vaccine as quickly as you can, please. I got an anti-vaxxer in my family. Put on, get the vaccine, please.